Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this brand new day. Yes, indeed, another brand new day. Well, semi-brand new. I mean, it's just a continuation of yesterday. It's not a distinct chunk of anything. The only difference that we have in divisions of days is the fact that we go unconscious between days. We fall asleep for one third of our lives. What a waste. I mean, if we don't do it, we die. So it's not really a waste, but still. For one third of our lives, we're flopped over unconscious, effectively dead to the world. Thumbs up. And again, a brand new day. Now this is what I'm, I'm gonna talk about here. It just does one minor thing. And in fact, I don't even know why I made a big deal out of it. Sorry about that. It's extemporaneous talk. And that just means I start talking off the top of my head. That's the way I do my, my daily vlogging. Thumbs up for that. But beforehand, in my vlogging here, I talked about how when it's raining, like today, it's raining quite a lot out there, I tend not to go walking because, number one, human life has evolved in such a way that even though our modern life is not like the way that we evolved, the way that we evolve still affects everything that we do. Human culture is such that when it gets like it is outside, winter, cold, wet, what we tend to do as human beings is cocoon. We stay at home. We don't go out. We don't do things. That's just what people do. I need to walk. I need to exercise. I've got to keep my exercise up. I'm 55 years old. I got to keep my ticker working as, as an good as it can go for as long as it can <laughs> so thumbs up on that oh itchy nose my apologies but one of the things that happens because wet cold rainy I don't want to go out I don't want to get soaked even with the best umbrella rain doesn't just come straight down you know there's wind there's variance so that you're getting wet from like your waist on downward and when you get to your feet your feet are soaked my shoes while newish they're within like two, two, three months old only. Thumbs up on that. I thought was that I finally, when my other shoes got so bad that I could walk from my front door to the post office and back after raining and I'd have to change my socks because my feet were wet. I needed some new shoes, whether I could afford it or not. So I bought some new shoes. They're ultra cheap, but I can't keep going out and walking and having wet feet that's not good for your skin that's not good for just your general health and I have troubles you know gross enough as this is I have troubles enough as most people do I imagine with athletes foot I mean I'm, you put your feet where they sweat inside of a confined area where they're going to stay nice and warm and moist you get fungus athletes foot fungus so yeah, I have to deal with that. And that's not healthy or good. And if your feet are soaked, it loves that. So I tend not to go out walking when I'm raining. I had talked about that on, in vlogging. And in comments, someone said, hey, you know what? I have this piece of equipment, I'm gonna send it to you. And then they took a look and said, you know what? I'm just gonna send you a new one. I walked to the post office yesterday. Now, I don't get a lot of stuff anymore. And in fact, generally, I don't get anything at all. I mean, people used to say, it used to be back two years ago, a year ago, if I went to the post office, there was always a stack of postcards. Now, I haven't been getting anything for ages. So, but generally when people send me something, it's something like once a month people do, but they send something like this, which makes everything awesome. <coughs> I mean, it's awesome no matter what I get. I'm, I don't feel entitled. I don't feel upset or unhappy that people don't send me things. Aside from the bit of just unhuman, you know, so no matter what, there's unhuman. But I don't feel entitled in that, you know, no one sent me something, I feel depressed. It's like, oh, no one sent something, oh well. Oh, something sent, somebody sent something, yay! It's like, that's the proper way to look at it, and that's what I do. But somebody sent me this. I do not know how much these cost but it is an awesome little device i checked it out i ran put my feet up on the things and just pedaled for 
boy, must have been 20 minutes, and uh, it's awesome. So thank you so very much. It's got a little counter thing on the front. The only thing that I don't know about permanent construction, there appears to be a lot of plastic used like for the inside parts and plastic wears out, but you know, everything wears out. You know, even if it was made out of metal, eventually, you know, solid titanium, eventually everything wears out. So it's really awesome. It is very solid. It's a good thing. Thank you so very, very much. And so even though it's raining today and I'm not going to be able to get out walking, I'm still going to be using my legs. And let me tell you, that's one of the most important parts about going out and walk. I was thinking about this yesterday while I was out walking. <laughs> one of the things that happens, of course, is that is using your leg muscles is they are the longest and because of the longest, the biggest, and strongest sets of muscles you have in your body. Using those longest, biggest muscles you have in your body really burns energy. But it also, if you're cold, that's one of the best ways to get warm. After all, each one of your mito your cells are packed with just hundreds of mitochondria. And each of your mitochondria is burning at like 50 Celsius. And when you exercise, they burn hotter. So if you're cold, if your fingers are freezing, the best thing you can do is get your legs moving because one of the biggest problems that everything in our world has to deal with is heat accumulation, waste heat, waste information. Your body is accumulating heat at a tremendous rate and it's a very, very hard problem for it to burn off enough energy without, well, heat, radiate enough so that you don't burn up in your core trying to keep you at a nice homogeneous heat rate is very difficult for your body. I mean, it's not difficult and then it struggles to do it. It's just there's a whole mess of systems, all of them set and designed just to do things like monitor and control your temperature. Waste heat. Thumbs up for that. But if you're cold, that heat's got to go somewhere. And one of the best ways your body has to distribute heat is your blood flow so you get those long muscles in your legs working they got your body's got to get rid of that heat somehow then the best way to do it is to pump it out into the bloodstream and get it out into the rest of your body so yeah if your hands are really cold get up and start going out walking and doing stuff you're getting that blood flow you're getting your body struggling to get rid of the waste heat from your core the best way to do that is to pump it out to your extremities it works, it's good stuff. And it's just good exercise. And if you wanna be healthy and you wanna keep your body ticking, walking and just working your legs is some of the best things that you can do. People that walk and people that do just gentle bike riding, they have some of the best working cardiovascular systems that you can have. And that's great. Because you're not trying to be an athlete. You're not dedicating your life to it. You're not trying to be an Olympian athlete. You're just trying to be a person trying to live as long and as healthy as you can. And using those legs is one of the best ways to do it. I mean, shucks, half of our body height and half of our body mass almost is in our legs. Use those things. Thumbs up for that. And use them in the best ways you know how and take that as you will. Thumbs up for that. <laughs> of sorts. Now, one of the things that I finally did do, I finally got around to it. Mama Squeak is in her trial bin. Come here, Mama Squeak, over here. Come on, over here. I know you're older. She is older. She is old. I mean, she's been alive the entire year that we've lived here in this house. She's been alive, and she was alive for, good golly, about nine months or a year while I was living in my brother-in-law's garage. So she's, she started off young. She was a homegrown little, little Hamatron, and she grew up and then went into heat, escaped out of her cage, got into one of my male hamsters' cage, and got pregnant and had a whole bunch of babies. And then Little Squeak Jr. was her baby, and then Little Squeak Jr. died. But so she's she's like almost two years old. 
if not to and she is still I mean you can't really feel her spine except as just inside of her body there's a solid thing you can't feel her vertebrae and each of her her hips are are solid and meaty I'm gonna put her down or she's gonna try digging through my hand here <laughs> here you go little one so she is great health she's one of those that hopefully is gonna last maybe three years or more can I mean she might I just gotta hope that with the bin cage here that she's not gonna chew through it she was doing that with one of the larger ones but these smaller bin cages don't have the, this mushroom bubble you know like a, a bottle like a bottle of wine has what's known as the punt in it where it dips inward a couple of reasons for that one of them is the bigger the punt the less wine they have to put in the bottle so that's one good way to make the product that they're selling you more of the container and less the product but there's other reasons for it as well but it did that in the bottom of the larger bins and mama squeaks like she chews and she was chewing on the mushroom bubble of that and so i had to take her out and put her into back into one of the smaller cages again if she can't find a place to chew on this then this is her forever home and all of my hamsters are now within bin cages once again thank you so very very much potato tron who sent me bin cages for all my hamatrons and I believe also was the one who sent me a big bucket not big bucket but a big container of aspen shavings as well because if you're going to use wood shavings for your hamsters and I use wood shavings if you're going to use wood shavings you don't want to use fir or cedar both of which are wonderful smelling woods but the fact that they smell so good is because of the essential oils in them and the essential oils in them give off fumes vapor and those vapors are very very bad for hamsters lungs it's terrible for their oh my god i've forgotten the word it's not cardio it's not vascular pulmonary it's terrible for their pulmonary systems so you don't want to eat the only there's just only one wood that does not give off essential oils that are harmful to small animals that breathe those vapors of the oils and that is aspen and so i use aspen shavings for all my little guys and it's good they're able to dig and it's small enough it's not sawdust so it's not just dust and it's not beauty bark it's shavings like this and they're able to dig through it and they put it in their mouths so that they can carry it it's good stuff I mean they have to be careful of course it's wood shavings so. but it's it's good for them and they like it they dig they go digging and they love to dig they're burrowing animals so boogle and mama squeak they just dig and bury themselves and it's a good thing so thumbs up on that oh yeah last night we had dinner my housemates made alfredo chicken and so we had alfredo chicken and then i stuck around long enough and she actually provided me with some thc oil dabs and i got really dabbed out and i said to everybody when i came over here to put a hamster away because i was playing with hamsters downstairs and as I said, I get easily distracted when I'm medicated, so if I don't see you guys again, good night. And so I came up here around 10 o'clock last night. And then after a short, relatively short period of time, I fell asleep. I don't know exactly when, but I do know that at 2.30 in the morning, at least two and a half hours after, my one housemate came up and said, go to bed. And at 2.30, I wake up, my neck killing me. It still hurts now because it was just dangling. My neck is like, my head's like a big box at the end of a, a crane. Instead of curving the way it's supposed to, my neck juts out this way. So my head dangling and then just uh, as I'm sleeping in my chair, my neck is killing me. So I went to bed and I woke up an hour later today, right around 6 o'clock a.m. And right now it's 722 so I have had much less wake up time than I normally do that's why my nose is really really red and the, the bands across my forehead are very visible 
because that's my sleep mask. The band, this is a fabric thing that goes across here, and then there's this silicon cup thing that goes across my mouth. Presses real hard here, that's why my nose is red there, because pressure on your skin, after two hours your skin starts to die. I wear my mask the entire time I'm sleeping, so my skin has been crushed and is dying there for like four hours. Thumbs up for that. Uh-oh, I forgot to do what I normally do, which is open up 24 hours with the comments on my community tab. I'm going to thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. I'm not reading the comments. I'm just going through and thanking people for having left me a comment. So whether it is a good comment, a bad comment, or an indifferent comment, the fact that you left me a comment is important, not the content of the comment. Now, if I missed pronounce your name. No disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. We're not good at names, so I do my best and I'm better than most, but I'm still an American English speaker. It's a range of 20 to 25 because even though I count an ASL on the fingers of my hand, I still get lost. Fibromyalgia for the win. So we have Boykaz Hui. I, I hope. Thank you so very, very much. Yuval Grossman. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Dawak. Thank you very, very much. Crazy Drumsticks, greatly appreciated. Chris Jimenez, I sure hope. Thank you very, very much. Pastel Goth Pancake, son of a gun. Thank you very much. Soma Coda, greatly appreciated. You Alex, son of a gun, and thank you. Isaac Diaz, I sure hope I'm close. Thank you. And Toji, Toji Vertigo, I sure hope. Thank you very, very much. Every, let's see, that, that was, that. everything happens to me, son of a gun. Dow Rodney, I think. Thank you. Money Free Society, greatly appreciated. Evan McFlegan, good to see you in the comments. It's been a while. Thank you. PF Film Stuff, thank you very much. Hor Us, I sure hope. Hope, Horus, Horus, however that would be pronounced. And then there is Kaylee B, thank you very, very much. Dave 666, son of a gun. Christopher Kane, thank you very, very much. AHP Blue, thank you. Tundra Keeper, greatly appreciated. Thomas S., thank you very, very much. Quizzler, I sure hope, thank you very much, greatly appreciated. Jordan Mel, thank you very, very much. And then last but not least, Ice Damon, greatly appreciated. Each and every one of you, as stated, you get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people. Thank you so very much. And as stated, I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm gonna read the comments after the video, Thumbs up everyone I read. Answer as many as I can. I spend a lot of time in the comments answering as many as I can. I spend too much time in the comments, but I like talking to people, so thumbs up on that. <laughs> and if you could check out my various links down below, that would be awesome. I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, Google+, Plus. if you could check those out. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign and become a Patreon.com patron, that would be awesome. Like one of these beautiful, awesome people that has become one of my Patreon.com patrons. That would be beautiful and awesome. Now, if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes. I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very, very much. And if you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Thumbs up. And if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be cool. But I would understand if you don't want to. My personality has rubbed people wrong my entire life. So if you don't like my videos or you don't want to subscribe, I do understand. But if you are down with it, I will do my best to keep you entertained from now until the literal, well, end of my time. I turned 55 last October. Average lifespan of the American man is 74 years with access to money and health care. So, thumbs up on that. I hope to be around for at least the next 19 summers, and if things go well, hopefully I'm going to have a presence on YouTube during that entire time as well. Thank you all so very much for coming along on this journey of exploration with me each and every day. I am a talker, I have to process by talking. If I have nobody to talk to, and I don't, I suffer from social isolation, then I cannot process, and if I can't process, my brain does not work right. Thank you for coming along on this journey with me. Thank you for letting me process. Thank you for helping me make my brain work better. I fall asleep as it is all the time. When I don't vlog, when I don't process, when I don't get my brain bubble sorted, I fall asleep even worse. So thank you for coming along. Greatly appreciate it. 
I have a reaction video coming up, I've got a game video coming up, hopefully I have a game video from a game channel, that would be a good thing, links down below if you want to check that out, so you take care, have a great day today, I'll see you on the flip side, have a good one.